just can't reach. So you can get what we had here last week, which is the way he wants. Well, he gets. Hello and welcome to the album man. And today I'm going to be doing well continue my Guns N' Roses discography with Use Your Illusion 2. So this is the second part of the Use Your Illusion double album, and this is imaginatively called Use Your Illusion 2. And this album got to number one in the US and UK charts with Use Your Illusion 1 at number two. So let's go through the track listing. Civil War, 14 Years, Yesterdays, Knocking on Heaven's Door, Get in the Wing, Shotgun Blues, Breakdown, Pretty Tied Up, Locomotive, So Fine, Estranged, You Could Be Mine, Don't Cry, and My World. So it starts out with Civil War, which is a war protest song written by Slash Axel and Duff. And this song came about as Slash used the whiff to do sound checks, and Axel just one day started singing a few lines to it at the beginning. And then with Duff's help, they managed to form this fully-fledged song. And this was actually originally released before Use Your Illusion on a compilation called Nobody's Child, Romanian Angel Appeal. And it is also the only song on both Use Your Illusions to feature the drummer from Appetite for Destruction, Stephen Adler, as he was sacked after the recording of this song, as it took about 30 takes as the drugs he was taking and alcohol were affecting his drumming, so was sacked and were placed with Matt Sorm of The Cult. Well, he spent a bit of time touring with The Cult. Anyway, this song starts out with samples from Strofer Martin's speech in a 1967 film called Han Luke, which is over the top of the magnificent whiff from Slash before Axel's voice comes in. His voice just seems to have a haunting nature in this song, mainly in the verse, and then we get to the chorus, which is a passionate chorus. It really is truly a beautiful song, lyrically and musically. Slash's riff is phenomenal, and lyrically it's just so strong from Axel and Duff. But I mean, how could I forget the two majestic solos played in the middle and end by the God Among Men, that is Slash. The I think this is the best opening track to any album Guns N' Roses have ever released. Yes, I think it's better than Welcome to the Jungle. It's one of my all-time favourite Guns songs. I mean, how could anyone not like a song that's catchy as hell and has a quote from a Peruvian general? So then we get to 14 Years. Now this is an easy song about his and Axel's friendship, which had been 14 years at that point. It features Izzy on vocals and was only performed live when he was still in the band, of course. It also features a really cool piano melody from Axel. I think it's just a really great song and really nice after Civil War again. It has another great cause which Axel joins Izzy for. Then we get to Yesterdays, and this is another track to feature the writing talents of West Arkey, you know, crops up all through our Guns N' Roses discography, except for Chinese Democracy, I think. And the spaghetti instant because that's what covers. Anyway, I'm going off topic. And um, yeah, it's a fair track in the world to really sort of have that commercial, more ballady gun sound compared to the Appetite Warners. But again, a very strong song with lovely vocal deliverance from Axel. And I said in my Use Your Illusion 1 review that Axel's voice is just on top form on Use Your Illusion. These really are his best vocal performances ever. Okay, then we get to the famous cover of Bob Dylan's Knocking on Heaven's Door. So on each Use Your Illusion, there is a cover. We have Live and Let Die and Use Your Illusion 1, and we have Knocking on Heaven's Door and Use Your Illusion 2. Now, I'm not a Bob Dylan fan, and never claimed to be. And personally, I think the Guns N' Roses version is far superior. And I think Axel's voice suits it exceptionally well. And Slash play also plays a magnificent solo on his BC Witch Mockingbird. It's one of the best songs on the album. And it's one of the all-time great covers up there with the cover of Tim Curry's Slogan by Joe Bonamassa. Right, now we get to Get in the Wing, which is a slanderous song against all the music critics that gave them negative reviews for their actions on stage. It was written by Slash... Axel and Duff. 
Now, I've always adored this song. It has such a good whiff and solo from Slash, and the lyrics are so well done. And I just love the way they, na they actually name the journalists and insult them personally. And Axel basically effectively just tells them all to suck his dick. <laughs> it really does sum up the attitude of the band completely. And I love the anger and venom directed towards their critics. It's very good. And then we get to Shotgun Blues, which features Axel on rhythm guitar instead of Izzy, quite weirdly, and carries on from Get in the Wing as what I would call sort of the true war a gun sound. It's a heavy, fast track with great whiffs and Axel getting pissed off at everything that moves, as usual. And this song certainly does have a sort of a bluesy walk sound feel to it, but classic gun song. Then we get to Breakdown. Now this is the hardest song to record according to Slash, as they had to synchronise so many instruments, and apparently saw and lost it with the drumming a couple of times. And this song, it's balladier than the song before and has a lot more piano. I have to say that I can definitely hear tinges of meatloaf in here. Could just be me, but I think there's tinges of meatloaf in Breakdown. Only bits, but I think it's noticeable. And again, this song just carries on the consistency this album has. Then we get to pre-tied up the Perils of Rock and Roll Decadence. And the Perils of Rock and Roll Decadence is its subtitles. And it opens with the sound of a choral sitar from Izzy, who wrote it, and this appears to be based on a bondage encounter with a dominatrix and her client. He seemed to one time just walk into someone's house, and that's how he found it, with a fat guy with an onion in his mouth. And Yeah, you know, I don't really want to go into detail. But anyway, it's a great song, very typical for this album. Yeah, really good. Though it gets a locomotive or complicity. And this can really be described as a nine minute sort of even dabbling to funk metal song. With all the guitars played by slashes, again Izzy seems to have vanished from the face of the earth. It's a great epic song and it just has standout performances from all of the band. Well, except Izzy because he wasn't on it. But again, another wonderful, wonderful song and one of my favourites. Then we get to So Fine which is written and sung by Duff McKagan as a tribute to the death of one of his heroes. Well, that's certainly the impression that he was inspired hugely by him when, because I've been reading Duff McKagan's autobiography. And anyway, the guy to tribute to, if you don't know, is Johnny Funder, the punk rock musician. And it really is a wonderful tribute to him, with a lovely piano melody driving the song, but it does have some more punk-influenced music towards the chorus. And it really shows that Duff McKagan can sing. If you've ever had Loaded, you can certainly tell as well. Now we get to Estranged. And this is one of the most famous songs from the Use Your Illusion albums. And this song is really famous for two things. It's phenomenal guitar work and melodies. And the second thing it's famous for is its dolphins, of course. But we'll come to the dolphins in a second. So, this is an epic in every sense of the word. One to get over nine minutes, featuring no chorus, and some of the all-time greatest piano and guitar melodies of all time. Everything in this song is just truly beautiful. But, except for this song being phenomenal on its own, obviously the best bit of it is the dolphins. Now, if you don't know why I'm going on about dolphins with this song, and clearly haven't seen the Estranged music video. As, if you don't know, the Estranged music... For Use Your Illusion, Axel wants to have a trilogy of videos, which were Don't Cry, November Wayne, and Estranged. Now, in the videos of Don't Cry, November Wayne, these, the sort of the basic storyline, and it revolved around Axel and his girlfriend at the time, who was Erin Everly. But before the shoot of Estranged, they split up, Axel and Erin Everly. So, she wasn't going to appear in it, and it has a really weird storyline in the Estranged Ones. There's a SWAT team at the beginning, and a hell of a lot of dolphins. I mean, there are a lot of dolphins. Dolphins come out of a plane, he swims with dolphins, there's dolphins on the television behind him, there's a dolphin on his car, but that's not a real one, it's just a silver one. So yeah, I mean, who doesn't like dolphins? 
Anyway, I think this is the magnus opus for the album and one of Guns N' Roses' just all-time best songs. So following a strange, there's of course a hard act. But you know what? You Could Be Mine does a bloody good job and it's superb in its own right. Again, a classic Guns-style song with all the great elements you'd expect. Really, it's a classic tune. Then we get to Don't Cry, the alternate version. And it has the exact same music as the original, but just a variation on the lyrics. Now it does feel a bit cheap, as it really is just a rehash and re-vocal recording of Don't Cry, but, I mean, it's Don't Cry for God's sake, I'm not going to complain about it, you know. And now the album, it really does save the worst for last, with the unusual, unexpected, uninteresting My World. Now the rest of the band didn't actually know this song was going to be on the album, or even that it existed till it was released. I mean, I can't even describe this song, it's just a WTF song. After the magnificent Don't Cry, you get your ears assaulted by whatever the bloody hell it is that this song is. It's just confusing. It's, it's just not much to describe it, it's just really strange. But it's not good strange, it's more like Lutalica strange. Anyway, in conclusion, even with My World, which I don't really think counts because none of the band knew about it and it's just Axel being... Axel, um, I think Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. Oh, I thought I had 1 with me. No, I don't, but Use Your Illusion 1 and 2, I think, are the second greatest double album of all time, second only to Pink Floyd's The Wall. So I'm going to give this true masterpiece and one of the greatest rock albums of all time a 10 out of 10. I love it. It's just a shame that the Spaghetti Incident, which I'll be reviewing next, is nowhere near as good and is pretty awful. But the big question is, is this the last great Guns N' Roses record? Or do they redeem themselves with Chinese democracy? Well, we'll find out soon. This has been the Album Man. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. And long live Wakan Wow.